Hey everybody, this is Kevin and welcome to another Max-Q Rockets model build kit. Uh, if you enjoyed the last build I did with the Falcon 9, uh, this is very similar. It's the other rocket that's available from Max-Q, although I know they're in the planning stages of producing uh, further rockets in their line of uh, 3D printed rocket kits. But uh, for now, they've got the Falcon 9 and the Vulcan Centaur rocket from ULA, which is the United Launch Alliance. And this is a much, uh, much, I guess, stouter rocket. The body tube is probably, I'm guessing, ST, I'm sorry, BT-70, maybe? Uh, obviously much larger than 60. So I'm, I'm just gonna throw out a ballpark idea there at 70, but uh, not sure. Uh, the little uh, SRB boosters look like they might be BT-5s, uh, actually. So, but very similar to the uh, last build, we're gonna we're gonna use the same techniques. Uh, I'm gonna use the same cement, which worked really good on the Falcon 9 build. This is the Sky Grip 16 fast setting plastic cement, and it's good for all types of plastics. And it worked wonderfully on uh, the whatever the material is, which I never did quite find out what it is, but. Uh, this plastic material that they 3D print holds up very well with that cement. And it also works very good with CA glue. So if you've got super glue, that'll work as well. The only thing is the cement gives you a little bit more working time than super glue does. Um, as far as what I plan on modifying, I will tell you that I had pretty good success with uh, the modification on the Falcon 9 as far as the shock cord mount. And this has a very similar um, technique I'm just not overly satisfied with that thin plastic there. So I'm gonna beef that up with some carbon fiber tubing just like I did in the last one. And uh, it should hold up just well. The other thing is um, the SRBs, the, the solid rocket boosters, there's six of them. And they mount three aside, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that mounts to the bottom of the rocket for display. But for actual flight, you are to remove the SRBs and then insert your fin can which is very similar to the Falcon 9 um, in the, the way it's set up and it fits in these little slots here. But again, they provide opaque plastic fins. Uh, for this one, more than likely, I'll get some clear acrylic. Um, they don't make, like I, I've done before, you take an existing fin can from other rockets, but I just could not find anything this big that's pre-made. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up some uh, acrylic plastic fins at this point, that's what I'm guessing I'm gonna do. You know, down the road, who knows, I may change my mind yet again, but for now, that's the plan. But uh, we've got two different colors. We have a gray and a white. You can see the first stage is more of a grayish color. And then the upper stage, including the couplers and joiners are all white. The SRBs are white. The nose cones for the SRBs are white, but the engine nozzles are all black to include the first stage as well. And it's got a little screw-on cap, which acts as your engine cap, uh, retain, uh, engine retainer cap, basically. Uh, that you're, you're, you'll slide your C motor. Whoops! You'll slide your C motor in there, and just uh, you know, anchor it down with that, and you're good to go. Uh, as far as swapping out the boosters to the fin set, it looks like it's a pretty easy process according to the directions of just slipping this out the bottom and slipping this one up on onto it to give it uh, its fins for flight. Other than that, I think it's a pretty straightforward build, so I'll go ahead and clear the bench and we will start working on the Vulcan Centaur rocket from ULA. Okay, the first couple steps we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna glue the engine mount onto the base of the first stage body tube. Now, in test fitting this, it was really, really tight and I actually had a little bit of a, a jam up on a test fit and I, I, I did crack a little bit around the launch lug area, so I reinforced that with some uh, CA glue, and then I sanded it down. And I sanded more off than originally was there all the way around to make fitting on a little bit easier and less cumbersome. And the, the cement is going to fill in those voids and gaps and help, you know, uh, mold everything into together. So uh, cosmetically, it, it's just fine. And uh, but I do recommend if yours is a little bit tight sand down a little bit of the inside of the body tube and maybe a little bit on the engine mount and that should be sufficient. So now we're going to go ahead and take some cement. We're going to run it around the body tube 
And I'm not gonna be too sparing with it. I'll, I'll be uh, a little more liberal than I normally am with glues. Okay. And then we're gonna make sure we line up our channel. And once we get it on, go ahead and insert it all the way in. There, just like per that, perfect. Excellent. Okay, I will probably have to uh, launch lug. Tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a piece of masking tape and hold down the launch lug area just so the cement can help bind to it. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna give this about 10 minutes to set and then uh, come back to it, make sure everything's good and hard. If I need to add a little bit of CA glue around the base of the launch lug, that'll be no issue whatsoever. But uh, that was a, a fairly straightforward process, a little on the tight side, but at least when it's tight, you can sand stuff off, but if it's too loose, it's really hard to add material to it. So again, not an issue at all. And uh, so we'll set that aside. Now, this is the part where I'm gonna eventually have to glue some carbon fiber, fiber tubing to this. It's kind of hard to see, but I can move that almost a half inch up and down. And I'm just afraid that prolonged period of use with the heat and the dryness, if it starts to get brittle, that eventually that piece can crack during an ejection charge and we may lose the whole front end. So I'm gonna beef that up with some carbon fiber tubing later with some uh, epoxy. But we don't need to worry about that just yet, but we do need to now glue the transitional piece here. Let me make sure I get this oriented the right direction. I wanna get the launch lug, yeah, facing the groove like that. There we go. So that's gonna glue in, let's see if I can do a dry fit. To show you. Yeah, it's gonna go in like that. And it's gonna go in with, oh, maybe a little more than a quarter, almost a half inch, um, 3 sixteenths or so, or maybe, no, 7 sixteenths. Anyway, it's almost a half inch. Um, kind of late, my mind's not as good as it normally is. But uh, that's a nice fit. We can go ahead and glue this in with cement now, and then after that sets, I can go ahead and glue our carbon fiber on. So let's go ahead and get this glued in with some cement, just to, just to strengthen things up a little bit. Okay. Again, I'm adding a liberal amount, not trying to be too frugal with it. You always want to add it to the inside portion so as you slide it any excess glue will ooze out forward inside the tube not out the tube okay okay we'll take our piece here line it up with that channel and push it until it stops and there we have it perfect okay perfect even all the way around. So we're gonna let that set, then we're gonna go ahead and glue the, the carbon fiber on, like I said, and then we'll be able to glue all this onto the main body too. But don't forget to, if you're gonna strengthen and do that beforehand, and then please do not forget to install your, your uh, shock cord to this, because once this is in, it's gonna be very difficult to get to your shock cord. So that's uh, of utmost importance. So yeah, we're gonna take care of that and uh, move on from there. So just let, let that dry for a while and uh, we'll come back to it. Uh, I can, they do tell you to screw this in. I guess I can do that now. I'm not sure why it has to be done, but the uh, engine cap retainer just screws into the engine mount like so. So there we are. So again, we'll just let that sit and dry and we'll come back and probably do the front end half, the, the upper portion of the rocket next. Okay, well, while the upper stage is still drying, we can go ahead and do a lot of other things. Uh, primarily the uh, second stage, we can go ahead and glue the engine mount to the, sorry, I had that the wrong way, the, to the base of the, the stage itself. And I'm just gonna run some cement. Now they don't tell you in the instructions to glue this on, and I will admit, when I test fit this on, it was very hard to get it out. I had to take a screwdriver and kind of pop it out from the inside. So it may actually hold, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm going to go ahead and cement this in because in the future, I'll never have a need to, to remove this. 
And we're also gonna build one of the SRVs. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna build all six on camera. It just becomes redundant. But I will do the first one and then I'll do the other five off camera. Uh, but pretty straightforward here. I'm gonna place some cement around the base on the inside. Trying to kind of pull it up under that lip so it can get full coverage on the inside. Okay, there we go. Okay, and we'll just pop that in. There we go. A little bit of a twist. I'm just going to align the nozzles with these channels. Uh, for no reason other than it might as well align it with something. But uh, there, it's nicely popped in seated. The cement will help bond the surfaces. So we can let those go ahead and, and dry off to the side. Now this is probably gonna be one of the easiest things of all to build and don't even really need to show much on camera, but I will anyway. <laughs> um, but we'll just go ahead and run a little bit of glue at the base of each of the SRBs. Take one of our nozzles and just press it all the way in. Um, it really doesn't get much easier than that. <laughs> okay, and then for the upper part, we'll do the nose cone. Again, I'm gonna put it on the inside of the cone. That way any glue will ooze up into the cone. Okay. A little bit of run there on the cement, but that's okay. Okay, we'll just pop that on the front end a little bit of a twist to help spread. Okay, so there's one completed SRB, probably the easiest part of the build right there. And uh, so I'll set that aside and we'll get the other five done. And we will come back to the upper stage and or the bottom stage and get the shock cord mount here done shortly. Okay, a quick update on a few things before we start into the next build. I have done a few things off camera, so let me get you caught up to speed on that and then we'll proceed with uh, the next step. Um, one of the number one things I realized, and this is kind of a major thing, is this is the main body tube with the engine down here. So basically, you know, the, the, the rocket's sitting about this high off the ground. And then you are to glue in this coupler here that's got your shock cord on it. And then you can proceed with, you know, everything else after that, okay? So what you're looking at though is, let me get the nose cone on so you can get an overall picture of the things here. So you've got the engine to about here, then you've got empty body tube to your shock cord starts here and then from the shock cord, then you've got the base of the second stage. Now, if I'm not mistaken, again, if that's where your shock cord is, And that's where your second stage goes. And it sticks out to about here. You've got, well, I'll just show you. Is that really all the space you've got for your parachute? Um, I Maybe I'm missing something, but that just doesn't seem like a whole lot of space for a parachute in there from the shock cord <laughs> to the second stage, which is where this is the, where it's going to break off, and then you've got all your shock cord, your wadding, your parachute, and everything. That that just didn't seem right to me, unless I'm missing something. Um, regardless, I decided to make full use of this entire body tube that's just kind of sitting dormant and not being utilized. So what I went ahead and did was, look at this, I've got a shock cord all the way down to the bottom. I'm not sure how well you can see on the camera there. But I've got it mounted through a hole and I'll show it. I'll put a picture up on the screen right now. You can see there from the engine mount looking up toward the front of the rocket, you can see a little, um, it's a little wooden dowel. It looks like the size of a toothpick, but it's a little wooden dowel that the 
Kevlar shock cord is tied to and then it runs through a, a 1 16th inch hole through that little firewall and then you see it comes in out the front here. So what that allows me to do is now, and I'm gonna use a, a little uh, parachute protector. I'm gonna mount it on the shock cord, but that's gonna go all the way down, protect, and now I've got this full tube to mount my parachute, wadding, shock cord, all that stuff that's gonna come out when we have deployment. So in order to make full use of the space, I am gonna clip off this original shock cord mount. Um, I hate doing this, but to me, it just seems more reasonable to make better use of the body tube. So there, it's it's official. I've, I've cut it off. <laughs> there we go. So that's a done deal. I will take a, an X-Acto knife and just kind of clean that up a little bit. Although it's, it is going to be glued on anyway, um, again, just to, so it doesn't snag, you know, I don't want the shoot or anything snagging on it. So there, a little bit more here. There we go. Okay. So now that can be glued in to the, the portion there. So let me, and I've already created, like I said, the, the Kevlar comes out. I've got it loop tied to some elastic, which if I ever need to replace the elastic, I can, you know, cut that off and just tie up a new, a new piece of elastic. This is black elastic that came with the kit. And then all the way at the top of that, I've already got my snap swivel mounted, which will then be mounted to a Kevlar loop that I've already attached to the engine bell on the second stage. So that, that'll clip onto there. And that's also where the parachute's gonna attach onto that Kevlar there. Um, the other, well, let me set that aside. Let's go ahead and get this glued on and then I'll show you what I've done to the nose gun. Let me stuff all that shock cord in there. Clean up some of my mess here. Okay. Take my cement. And I'm just going to run a bead of cement along the base. Of the tube here. Okay. And we're gonna take the, the end that has the launch lug facing down and we have to align that groove into the channel and there's really no twisting allowed because it only goes in and it can't twist because those grooves catch, but it does make nice, firm, solid contact. Make sure everything looks straight. Check your launch lugs, make sure they're in alignment. Not sure if you can see that on camera, but they are in alignment with one another. The raceway lines up with those two, two parts there. And there we have it. So now that that's gonna glue and dry, let me set this aside and let me show you what I've done up in the nose. In order for this to slide in and out of the part that I just glued on, see how smooth that rotates? And I did cut off the couple little tangs there that were part of the channel guide. Um, I cut those off so I could rotate it and it doesn't have to just plug in one direction. When I do plug it in the fly, I can rotate it till they line up. But with those in the way, you can't do any twisting at all. Um, but I did have to do a little bit of sanding on this portion of the shoulder and on the inside of the tube to make that a little bit smoother. So we'll get better ejection. It was, it was kind of hanging up a little bit. It was a little too tight for my liking, but just a little sanding on that plastic and it, it smoothed right up. So that's good to go now. Okay. Now, back to what I was gonna show you up in the front, put that cap back on, is the nose cone. 
I, just like I did with the, uh, and you saw it's pretty tight. Uh, but if you're gonna put expensive electronics in there, altimeters, um, whatever little payloads you wanna run, um, I just don't wanna rely on friction to keep that in, on. So like I did with the Falcon 9, I glued some PLA plastic on the inside and I lined it up. Where's my hole? There's the hole. I drilled it and then I tapped it for a 440 and I have, where I put it? Well, it might've rolled, <laughs> rolling off. Oh, there it is. Here's a little nylon 440 bolt that we'll just simply screw in and hold this on from ever separating. Um, one's sufficient. Um, I don't feel like I need to do one on the opposite side uh, because that ejection, this is, all I want to do is prevent this from, from coming off. So that one screw should be sufficient to hold it. And we're not adding much weight, if any. Uh, knowing me, I'll end up adding a, quite a bit of weight with the electronics up here anyway, but that is a lot of space. I mean, look at, look at how much cargo bay payload space there is there. Um, I could put quite a, quite, quite a few things up in there. So that's a really nice option to have. So that's all I've got for now on this portion. Like I said, we're just gonna wait for, uh, for this to dry. And really, the I can't really think of anything else. Looking at the instructions, we're all caught up, but the only thing left to do is the decal works work. So once we get uh, that dried, then we'll go ahead and start work, working on the decals. Okay, we are gonna begin with the decals now. And as you can see, I've got two sets of decals laid out in front of me. One of them is a set of vinyl decals, which was provided in the kit, which are outstanding. Um, I, I absolutely love them. But knowing me, um, if you already know, I prefer water slide. That's just my personal preference. So I scanned these in and printed up my own set of water slide decals. So I've got the American flag, I've got the United Launch Alliance emblem, I've got the silver wraparound stripe and the red flame wraparound stripe. And I printed them up on this Sunny Scopa Clear decal paper. Uh, so what I need to do is you know, cut these with scissors as, you know, close, but not too too close, because it's clear, so I can overlap and, and you won't see see it on the, uh, the body. So I'm gonna get these cut out, and then we are going to start placing these on the body tube. So let me get these cut out and we'll come right back. Okay, this is gonna be by far the largest uh, water slide decal I've ever done, and this isn't the biggest one. This will be the biggest one when we get to it, but we're gonna do one at a time. I'm gonna get this down, let it dry before we put the red one on because the red one's actually going to overlap this one a little bit. So the way the, the manual calls for is you take the shorter end, look at looking at that, that's about an inch and a half. This is maybe an inch. And it the corner goes right up to the raceway and flush with the bottom right there like so. And then we're just going to wrap it around the body. Now, <laughs> this is it's going to be tricky because we're going to be rotating it, twisting it, and trying to work the, the bubbles out at the same time. So I've got my Q-tips and paper towel ready to go. So let's go ahead and get the decal soaking as best as I can get it in here. Let's see. Let it all soak in. And we'll get some water. On the body as well but we're gonna we're gonna get the base done and then just sort of let the, the rest naturally flow I think that'll be the easiest way to do this okay so let's get this up on here oops I'm gonna tuck that corner in to the raceway kind of rotate as I pull. Okay, actually went down pretty good. All right, let's get this tucked into the corner nicely the way we want it. Tell you what, let's work this kind of dry so it stays. 
So we'll work the water out on this end. And little by little, I'll kind of stretch the decal as I need to. Not to jinx it, but this is going a lot smoother than I anticipated, to be honest with you. I just anticipated disaster. And that this would turn into a more of a blooper reel than an instructional guide. Um, but uh, no, this is actually very nice. Okay. Pushing all of our problems forward till we get to the end, and then we'll just work everything out like we're doing okay looks like we got a kind of a big bubble of water and or air here but we'll just work it out and again I'm gonna let this sit and dry quite a while before I even attempt to put the red one over top of it because I, I definitely want this to harden in place so we don't get it, you know. I, I just hate for this to slide out from underneath the red. So we'll get this one down nice nicely first. I just can't get over how, oops, aha, uh -huh, see, I knew there'd be a problem. It got caught on the stand. Okay, well, let me work this out now here at the base. So I'm just gonna have to hold this up. I'm gonna abandon my, my stand. I should never have put that down there to begin with. See, I did jinx it. I said not to jinx it, but it's going perfect. And probably right as I was saying that, I was rotating it through the stand and it caught. But we got it salvaged here. Pulling it right back into line alignment. Let me dab some of this water up. Okay. No, but everything else is still looking really good. So note to self, when I do the red stripe, I will not even worry about using the stand. That's just a accident waiting to happen. All right, I am very, very pleased with this overall. A little hiccup there near the end, but uh, we got it fixed. So we're gonna let that dry and we will come back and do the red stripe, which I, again, I've already cut out and it's going to go something like that. Something like that. So, okay, I will use the stand just to let it dry. As long as I'm not touching anything, I think we're good right there. Okay, we're good. Okay, now that the first decal has dried, it is ready to go ahead and lay down our next one and uh, if I thought this was gonna be hard this is gonna be really hard uh, first of all I'm gonna have to kind of soak it in stages because it's bigger than my little tub here but also because um, first of all, it's it's fatter it's wider and it's also gonna be overlapping a previous decal now this is dry so it's it's not gonna slide on me um, it's just just bigger and that's got me a little hits but also we're going to have to navigate around this channel here this little raceway does create a little bit of a, a challenge so we're just gonna have to you know work our way around it so I've got my q-tips and uh, paper towel ready to go and I did learn my lesson last time we will apply the decal without the stand so we don't <laughs> tear anything up so um, there's no time like the present so let's do it let's Let's get this soaking. All 
that's rolling up on me here, which is okay. Yeah, that's enough rolling up though. Let's kind of open it up. Okay, it's already lifting. Man, this stuff is quick, I'll tell you. Okay. Now, this one applies on the bottom edge, but right up in the corner next to the launch lug. Okay, yeah, it's already sliding on me, so let's go ahead and get it started. Now I'm gonna have to kind of work this curve inside the other curve. This is gonna be a little tricky at first, but uh, we'll make it work here. Okay, let me lay it down, see where it's situated. Okay, not bad. Okay, I'm gonna let it, um, actually gonna work this out now before I peel the rest off. That way we get a good, a good kind of foundation set. in a way I can show the camera a little bit better. Trying to get this groove tucked in. There we go. Just stretching, pulling, working out the, the wrinkles best I can. Once we get around this channel, we'll be we'll be set. I may have to come back to this a little bit later on. Let me go ahead and work on the rest. Okay, now it's time to get off this stand. And just kind of let the decal lay down naturally. Let it kind of find its place. Sorry, I'm kind of off camera here, but I gotta, gotta deal with this face to face here.
<clears throat> well, wasn't that fun? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm glad I had the opportunity to fast forward so you wouldn't have to sit through that grueling nightmare with me. Um, if you get this kit, use the decals they give you. That was an absolute nightmare. Uh, the wrinkles just got worse and worse as I pushed out toward the edge. They're not 100% gone. Um, I may try to hit it with a heat gun later on, which I've had success in the past with decals and heat guns, but you can't hold it on. You just gotta make a quick pass and rub. Quick pass and rub. And that might get rid of some of these wrinkles. But uh, I did have to resort to cutting through the, the, the center between these two colors uh, to try to get some semblance of uh, clean cleanless to it uh, that was just frustrating <laughs> so um, thank you to Max Q for providing vinyl decals and my apologies for not utilizing them um, that was just a rough rough deal but it came out okay in the end I'm, I'm pleased with it that was just rough so um, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then we're gonna come back and put on the American flag and the ULA logo. So there you have it. The Vulcan Centaur decal. Okay, I just recently came back in after hitting this with the heat gun and the results are pretty positive. I'm pleased with it. Uh, literally what I did was I just made a quick pass and rubbed. A quick pass and rub. I never, I didn't hold it on. Um, is it perfect? No. But uh, not even from, from five feet away do I, do I think you'll even notice anything. So I'm, I'm more than pleased with the way that it did come out in the end. But if you want to save yourself a lot of headache, do it the way they recommended and use the vinyl decals. <laughs> so anyway, the next step is to apply the American flag. And that's going to be pretty much centered right above... Well, you want to make sure the engines are, are horizontal to the ground, so I got to keep that positioned that way. And then we're going to set it right there, just like so. So let me go ahead and get that dipped in the water. This After that last uh, decal, this should be pretty, pretty easy. My goodness, that was... Like I said, thank goodness for time lapse and fast forwarding options, for your all's sake. Okay. Just lay this down and drag it out. Beautiful. Okay. Let's slide it up just a skosh. There we go. Looks good to me. And we'll just work out the, the water. Okay. Wow, that is so much easier than what, <laughs> that previous decal. But, uh, up everything looks good there okay I hope that looks good from your perspective all right we'll let that dry the way it is and we have one more decal to go which will be the ULA and that's actually going to go up on the nose cone portion of the rocket so we'll get things uh, situated and squared up for that. Okay, the last decal we have is the ULA emblem. That's gonna go right up here on the nose cone, right about like that, and it's gonna be in line with the American flag and the bottom stripes. Uh, very, very straightforward decal there. So we'll go ahead and get that soaking. Get my Q-tip ready. Okay, 
That literally should be all it takes. This is very quick paper. And I say that and then it, it's slow. <laughs> oh, there it goes. It's, it started to lift there. Okay. Okay, so we'll get some water on there. There we go. I had a little bit of a curl initially, but uh, we got that straightened out. Okay, I'm gonna look overhead. I'm gonna get that half, not half, but that crescent curve right about where I want it. Centered with everything else, looks straight. Okay, we'll just press out the water. There we go. That looks really good. There it is. Okay, so now the, we're pretty much done with the rocket. I gotta let things dry now. I'm gonna let them dry overnight. And tomorrow I will put a coat of clear uh, future floor polish over it to kind of help keep the decals down and protected. And then we're about ready to fly. Now I do have to continue working on the boosters, the SRBs, there's six of them, three on either side that will temporarily mount for display. And then I'll also have to build up the fin unit for flying purposes. So we'll do that uh, at a later time. But for now, I'm just gonna let this sit aside and let these decals dry permanently. Okay, we finally reached the stage of completion. The rocket is done uh, again. I've done a lot of things off camera, but I will show you what I did just to keep everybody up to speed. Um, you probably noticed this, and I'll get back to this here in a second, but that's that's kind of a big news. Um, the rocket itself, I did show you early on when I built one of the SRBs, and I since went on and, and did the other five, and uh, got them glued on to the, the, the snap ring, which actually just snaps onto the engine mount uh, it will snap off, but it actually works as a very good stand. It, it keeps the rocket very well balanced. You know, it, I've got them all even and flush with the, the engine on the bottom. So they are permanent on the ring. But uh, okay, so you're like, okay, now what? When you wanna fly it, what do you wanna do? Well, I'm gonna pop this off and show you what I'm gonna do. Um, since you saw it last also, I did go over it with a coat of the uh, future uh, clear floor polish and um, it, it really pops. I mean, I'm really, I'm really pleased with the way it came out. Um, again, if it flies half as good as it looks, I'll be more than happy. So, okay, so you wanna fly it, what do you do? Well, very carefully, and I, <laughs> I emphasize that word carefully, just kinda pop, let's see if I can do it. Of course, it's not gonna wanna cooperate now that I'm, I'm recording, but let me see if I can. See, I told you it was a snug fit, and it is. There it goes, okay. <laughs> but you want that, you want it snug. So that comes off, we'll set that aside. And so when it comes to the fins, what did I do? Well, I went to Hobby Lobby and picked up a sheet of clear plastic. And this one had a little bit of a warp to it but I'm not too concerned about the warp because I've got the, the fin warp going parallel to the ground. So I'm not gonna get any air deflection or anything, anything like that. So the little bit of a warp that the plastic has is gonna be inconsequential. But I took an existing fin, let me pull one out of the bag here. This is the fin that comes with the kit. It comes with four white plastic fins. And you'll notice it's got this little notch here. That little notch is what fits into these little support mounts there. So 
So what I did was I took this and I traced it on that clear plastic sheet and I cut out four identical fins. And now because of the way the, pl the plastic cuts, I had to make straight cuts. I couldn't do this little, little notch here. So I just did a straight cut from that corner to this corner, from there to there. And, and you can see it's evident here, but uh, but it's full. It's fully uh, encased within that plastic, so the glue joint is good. I glued it with uh, medium CA glue, and I didn't hit it with the, the hardener or kicker or anything. I just wanted it to glue naturally, and um, it's hardened and it's solid, and it's almost invisible. And out in the out in the desert when I'm flying, you're you're not going to really notice. So this is actually my first time putting the fin can on. So let's see how this even goes here. Very gently. Oh, okay, that wasn't too bad. And it's, yeah, it's already snapped into place all the way around. So it will actually, well, it doesn't quite hold the rocket up because it doesn't quite reach as far down as the engine um, cap retainer there. But it's not gonna be for display anyway. But on the pad, that's what you're gonna see. And you're not going to see much of the fins at all, so it's going to look great in flight. It's going to look more scale, more realistic. And I'll tell you, if you've seen my launch videos, you know the, the train I fly on. It's pretty rocky. Fortunately, this is a very lightweight rocket. It doesn't weigh much. And because of the size of this body tube and the fact that I mounted the shock core down here, I've got a lot of room to fit a very large parachute. Now, I've been able to easily fit a 30 inch parachute in a BT-60 rocket numerous times and this is even bigger so I may even be able to squeeze in a 36 inch parachute and and that's not being that's not too far-fetched an idea because of course the bigger chute the slower it's going to come down and with these plastic fins the rocky terrain that I fly on I want the biggest chute that I can fit in there um, Heck, I might even be able to fit two 30s in there, to be honest with you, because um, they, they roll up very tight. If you see the way my RAV5 flights go with the ACE, I easily have a 30 inch rolled up tightly in the ACE tube, and there's room to spare. So with this being even wider and bigger around, I might be able to get two 30 inches in there. That would be really, really cool. So that might be worth trying in the future. So that wraps up this build. Um, again, uh, I'm excited. I got everything hooked up. I did. Let me pull this out. I did install a parachute um, blanket to help keep the, the flame from the engine discharge off the parachutes. See, I said shoots, plural. It's like I'm already planning to, to do the dual shoot thing. But uh, no, I'm really excited about the way this rocket came out. Uh, a couple modifications here and there, but still, overall, I am 100% a, uh, a fan of max q rockets um i will continue to buy actually more i want to i would like to get more of these kits to be honest with you because now that i've built them and i know how they go together i think i can do a little bit better job and cleaner job in the future um one thing i'll point out there were a couple instances where i was gluing the cement and let me show you actually it's most evident on my boosters a couple times during the build, I made the comment, I'm gonna be liberal with the glue. And that actually came back and bit me because there are some areas, I don't know if you can see them too well, where the plastic overly melted. And that's due to me using way too much cement and it just ate away and melted that plastic down. Uh, some of the nose cones are pretty charred away where the, the cement seeped down to the tip. Um, and that's just excessive use of the cement and it just over melted the plastic. So I need to learn to be a little bit more conservative. So if you do use cement over CA glue, um, yeah, don't do as I did. Um, do as I say, not as I do as I say, because um, I did have that in a little bit. Not sure if you can see it here at the base of the rocket. There's a little bit of the gray there that I melted because I used a little bit too much cement there. So again, you know, live and learn. I'm still so ecstatic about the way it came out. I, I, I love the, the rocket as it is, but I do think I can improve upon it. So again, I'll be more than likely purchasing some more of these kits and 
I'm hoping and praying that Max-Q uh, in the future will develop some more scale kits and add to their fleet. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this build video on the ULA Vulcan Centaur. And I hope to see this out of the launch pad as well as my uh, upcoming Falcon 9. So with that, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, God bless and have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you in the next one.